So I welcome again to this class of uh, fundamentals of uh, mechanics. As far as uh, the today's class is concerned, in the previous classes we have been discussing about the moment of a force about a specified axis, and uh, today we will be, uh, you know, briefly uh, in introducing or briefly revising what we had done previously. And then we'll go ahead to some more fundamental problems uh, as far as uh, this course is concerned. Uh, in order to uh, solve a more problems um, or in order to you know revise what we had done previously, let me take up today this problem 4.5 not. Okay. As far as this problem 4.5 not is concerned, with this problem I want to revise what we had done about the moment previously, and then we'll go ahead to the moment about a specified axis that actually our topic is okay so as far as this question is concerned in this question we have we are being asked that strut a b we have a strut a b as far as a strut a b is concerned this is a this is b this strut a b you can treat as a, a, a piece of uh, wood or a piece of uh, some metal which is used to hold this lid okay you have a look of this lid as far as this lid is concerned this lid is hinged here you have a hinge joint here this is hinged here and uh, being hinged at one being hinged at one point um, if you lift it up and you release it then this lid will go down the lid will fall to the ground because of gravity now if we want that this that this lid should always be open or should be in this configuration as is given to us then we have to support this lid in this very position okay in order to hold it so that it does not fall to the ground the lid does not close for the lid to not fall to the ground or for the lid to be in this position it's very necessary that we have to support it and it says that we have a strut ab strut you treat as a piece of wood or you treat it as a piece of the metal which is being inserted between the points a and b and is used for holding this lid okay strut ab of the one meter diameter hatch door this is a hatch door, okay, because we are having this hinge or hatch on one side. The total diameter, this the door is, uh, its diameter is one meter and it is circular, okay. This uh, uh, door is circular, its diameter is one meter and it says that uh, it, it, it exerts the force of 450 Newton is being exerted on point B. That is, uh, it's like that this this hinge, oh sorry, this strut AB is exerting a force F in this direction, in the given direction, or the force is 450 Newton. What will be the effect of this force? The effect of this force will be that it will prevent this lid of one meter diameter from falling to the ground, okay? Now we are given, uh, what is the moment of this force? Determine the moment of this force about point O. How much is the moment of this force F? How much is the moment of this force F? about point O. This is the question uh, in, in, uh, that we have to solve. First of all, have a look, uh, look at this question. If you release this force, if you release this strut, uh, what will happen to this lid? Essentially, the lid will fall down. The lid will go down, okay? So it means, and, and the way the lid will go down is this point, as if you remove this strut, this lid will fall from point B, this lid will fall down and, you know, it will execute a sort of motion what will be the circular motion okay it will describe a circle it will it will describe an angle of 30 degree in the in the in the clockwise direction and this point b will essentially fall to the ground okay so it essentially means since if you release this force f the lid will undergo the circular motion like this the lid will follow the circular motion it means that this force f is creating some torque about this point O and it is that torque which is restricting the circular motion of this or the angular motion of this we should say the angular motion of this lid what I what I, what I'm what I mean to tell you is the effect of the force F will be to produce the moment about point O such that that moment or torque prevents this lid from undergoing any sort of angular motion okay now we have to determine how much is the moment of this force f about point o look at the line of action of this force as far as the line of action of this force is concerned the force starts from point a and goes to point b the line of action of the force is from point a and it goes to point b so we can say the line of action of the force is like this the force is going in this direction 
Okay, so this is the line of action of this force. Now, this is our force F. I say this is force F. This is our force F. This is the line of action of this force. Now, how much is the moment of this force about point O? For that purpose, what we have to do, we have to draw the radius vector. We have to draw the radius vector from point O. As you draw the radius vector from point O, this will be your radius vector. And we'll be calling this as, let's say, this is our radius vector R. Okay. The moment of this force about point O will be R cross F. So it means in order to find the moment of this force F about point O, we have to find the, we have to find the radi radius vector R, which is the radius vector drawn from point O to point B. We can also write this as, this is our, uh, this is our radius vector R. This is radius vector R O B. We have to find this radius vector R O B. This is our first step. And we have to express this force F as a vector quantity. If we can express this ROB vector as uh, 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 ROB vector, if we can express in terms of X, Y, and Z coordinates, and if we can express this F in terms of X, Y, and Z coordinates, then essentially we take the cross product between ROB and F. That will be the moment of this force about point O. So it means the problem boils down to first of all finding the value of ROB vector. First of all, we have to find the ROB vector. Okay, so in order to find the ROB vector, what we do, ROB vector will be equal to the uh, first of all, look at this point O, look at this point B. Okay, the coordinates of point O are point O is at the origin, so its coordinates are 0, 0, and 0. It does not have any coordinate along. It does not have any coordinate along x, y, and z axis. So this point O is at the origin. Origin. Okay. Now look at this point B. The coordinates of point B are along x axis. Since this point B, this point B is lying on y, z plane. Okay. It does not, and its projection. If you look at the projection of the point B, the projection of the point B is on the y axis. It does not have any x coordinate, so its x position is zero the x coordinate of point B is zero because if you draw the projection of point B, it falls on the y axis as is, as is given in the question itself. So it means that the x coordinate of point B is zero. Now, as far as the y coordinate of point B is concerned, in order to reach to point B along y axis, you have to, dis you have to move the distance from point O to this much. This will be the y coordinate. Okay, this, this distance is there. This distance, this distance that I have drawn here, this is the y coordinate of point B. And you see, we are given the shadow at the bottom that has a radius of 0 0.5. It means from here to here, the distance will be 0 0.5 meter. This distance will be 0 0.5 meter. This distance is 0 0.5 meter. And the distance from here to here, we have to calculate. That will be, since this angle is given to us, this angle is 30 degree. Therefore, this distance for us will be 0 0.5 meter cos of 30 degree. 0 0.5 meter cos of 30 degrees. Okay, so this this is the y coordinate of point B. Therefore, the y coordinate of point B will be 0 0.5 meter plus 0 0.5 cos 30. So I will write here. This is 0 0.5 meter. This is 0 0.5 meter plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 cos 30. Okay, this is the y coordinate. Now, in order to find the z coordinate. How do we find the z coordinate? That's very easy now. In order to find the z coordinate, what I will do, uh, let's erase this much. In order to find the z coordinate, in order to find the z coordinate, we have to, in order to find the z coordinate of point B, the z coordinate of point B is the distance from here to here, okay? Okay, so this total distance is 0 0.5 meter plus this total distance is one meter, okay? Because the lid has the di diameter of one meter. This total distance is one meter. Therefore, this distance will be, this distance will be one sine of, one sine of 30 degree, okay? So this is the Z coordinate of point B. So we'll write, so one sine of 30 degree means sine 30 degree will be the Z coordinate of point B, okay? So this is, these are x, y, and z coordinates of point O and point B. Point O is having x, y, and z coordinates as 0, 0, 0. And point B is having x, y, and z coordinates as given. Now, going ahead, therefore, 
uh, how do we write the vector rob we can write now this vector rob will be equal to this vector rob will be equal to uh, x coordinate of b minus x coordinate of o here you have x coordinate is 0 here is x coordinate is 0 therefore it will be 0 minus 0 i cap it will be 0 minus 0 i cap plus y coordinate of point b minus y coordinate of point o that is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 cos of 30 degree now as far as 0 0.5 cos of 30 degree is concerned in order to find the value so the y coordinate will be equal the 0 0.5 plus uh, 0 0.5 cos of 30 so i will write this as minus 0 that is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 cos 30 this is y coordinate of point b minus y coordinate of point o that is 0 therefore this minus 0 this is along this will be along j cap okay now the z coordinate will be sine 30 minus uh, 0 1 sine 30 so z coordinate will be sine 30 sine 30 minus 0 along k cap okay so this is our sine 30 minus 0 k cap this is our rob therefore we can clear uh, we can we can therefore solve this therefore this is equal to therefore this comes out equal to our rob becomes this is 0 minus 0 i cap that is 0 i cap then it is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 cos 30 that is equal to that's equal to 0 0.250 uh, that will be equal to uh, uh, along j cap it will be because it's uh, rob it will be in the value of this 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 cos 30 comes out to be equal to 0 0.860 uh, so this is 0 0.8660 the value of this term you can calculate it its value is equal to 0 0.886 and you have your j cap okay then you have plus sin 30 sin 30 is equal to 0 0.5 0 0.5 minus 0 is 0 therefore it will be 0 0.5 k cap okay so this is our so this is our vector rob so we have found vector rob after finding the vector rob we have to find the force f now as far as force f is concerned how do we find the force f now it's very easy again in order to find the value of force f we will first of all find we know the x y and z coordinates of point b okay we, we will find the x y and z coordinates of point a then we will write this force f with the help of distance formula uh, in terms of the magnitude of force f and a unit vector drawn from point a to point b the way we have been doing it okay now again return back as far as the coordinates of uh, point b are concerned the coordinates of point b are along x axis it is zero along y axis it's equal to, as we have done it previously its y coordinate was equal to 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 cos 30 that was equal to uh, 0 0.886 0.886 j cap 0.886 j cap and as far as its uh, uh, z axis z coordinate is concerned that is zero uh, that is one sine 30 which is equal to uh, you know uh, 0 0.5 so we can write the x y and z coordinates in better form we can say the for point b the x coordinate is zero the y coordinate is 0 0.0.886 0 0.866 and at z coordinate is 0 0.5 these are the coordinates of our point b so this is how our point b behaves these are the coordinates of our point b now what are the x y and z coordinates of our point a it's very easy now the x coordinate of point a this is how far point a is along x axis so this is y axis this is our x axis point a the distance of this uh, point a along from y axis is this much okay that is equal to 0 0.5 this distance is equal to 0 0.5 this distance this distance is the y coordinate this is the x coordinate of point a okay so this distance i mean to say this distance this distance this distance is the x coordinate of point a that's equal to 0 0.5 sine 30 so we'll write here this is 0 0.5 0.5 0 0.5 sine 30 okay 
zero point five sine thirty. Now uh, this is the x coordinate. This is the x coordinate. Now what about the y coordinate of point A? As far as the y coordinate of point A is the distance from here to this point. Okay, this distance we can find. This distance we can find. This this y coordinate of point A we can find. First of all, we have to move from this position to this position. That is zero point five. Then we have to move from this point to this point. That will be zero point five. Zero point five cos of thirty. So we can directly write it that as far as uh, uh, y coordinate, the y coordinate of y coordinate of point A is concerned. Just draw a projection on the y axis. Therefore, this distance will be equal to first of all, this is zero point five meter from here to here, and from here to here, it is zero point five cos of thirty. So y coordinate will be zero point five meter plus zero point five. Plus 0.5 cos of 30. These are the y coordinates. Now, as far as the z coordinate is concerned, as far as the z coordinate is of uh, of this uh, point A is concerned, point A lies on the x x y plane. Its z coordinate is equal to zero. Okay. Therefore, we can write. Therefore, as far as force F is concerned, force F vector we can write as it's equal to its magnitude. As far as its magnitude is concerned. Its magnitude is equal to uh, its magnitude is equal. Magnitude is given to us. It's equal to 450 newton. So we'll write this as 450 newton multiplied by the unit vector drawn from point A to point B. So how do we write the unit vector from point A to point B? X coordinate of point B minus X coordinate of point A along X axis. Y coordinate of point B minus Y coordinate of point A along Y axis. Z coordinate of point B minus Z coordinate of point A along Z axis divided by the total magnitude of the vector drawn from A to B. That is, we write it as the X coordinate of point B is zero. So we'll write it as zero minus the X coordinate of point A. X coordinate of point A is 0 0.5 uh, sine 30. So we'll write this as this is 0 0.5 sine of 0 0.5 sine 30. Okay, and this is along which axis? This is along. This is along x-axis, so we'll write this as i cap. Then plus the y coordinate of point B minus y coordinate of uh, point A. That is 0 0.866, 0 0.866 minus the y coordinate of uh, point A. The y coordinate of point A is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 cos 30. So this is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 cos 30. This is along cos 30. This is along j cap. This is j cap. And then we'll write the z coordinate of this minus z coordinate of this. That is 0 0.5 minus 0. That is 0 0.5 minus 0 along k cap. Okay. So this is the vector. Whole divided by the unit vector it's whole divided by the magnitude of this vector and as far as the magnitude of this vector is concerned we can write the magnitude of this vector as that will be under root of 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 cos 30 that is 0 minus 0 0.5 sin 30 whole square Plus, we have this square that is 0 0.8 double six minus 0 0.5 plus uh, uh, 0 0.5 cos 30 cos 30 square plus this is all under root 0 0.5 minus 0 square okay so this represents this total represents our force f and if you calculate it very quickly therefore force f if you do it very very quickly then force f will be equal to, as i am doing it with the help of calculators the force f comes out equal to it will be written as you have to multiply 450 with this vectors it will be first it is minus one point minus one double nine minus one double nine 
पॉइंट ए टू आई कैप माइंस फिफ्टी थ्री पॉइंट फाइव फोर जे कैप दिस इज द सेकंड कंपोनेंट एंड द लास्ट वन विल बी थ्री नाइन नाइन पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री दैट इज प्लस थ्री हंड्रेड नाइंटी नाइन पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री के कैप So this is the expression of force F in terms of x, y, and z coordinates. This is force F, and we already have R O B vector. Therefore, we can now write the. Therefore, we can write now. Therefore. Therefore, we can write the moment of force. Moment of this force about point O. Will become equal to, R O B. It's equal to R O B cross F. We know R O B. We know F. We'll take the cross product. That's equal to. We'll first write I cap, then J cap, then the K cap. Okay. So that's equal to components of R O B. It is uh, components of R O B along X. R O B does not have an X component. Therefore, it is zero. Component of R O B along Y. It is zero point. A double six. So we'll write this as zero point eight six six. Let me write it a bit bold. So x component is of R O B zero. J component is zero point eight double six. And as far as the k component is concerned, that is zero point. K component is zero point five. Now let's write x, y, and z components of force F. X component is minus one hundred ninety-nine point six three. Then y component is minus fifty-three point five four. Y component is minus fifty-three point five four. And as far as the z component is concerned, that is Three hundred ninety-nine point six three. That is three ninety-nine point six three. Okay, so this is how we write it. Okay, so this is this is the moment. Now we can take the we can easily solve this matrices. Sorry, this determinant we can easily solve now, which we can write as. We can therefore write this as yes. We can therefore now we have to solve it, which is very easy. That will be equal. First, delete this row. Delete this column. This multiplied by this minus this multiplied by this. That will belong x cap i cap. That's equal to solve this. This will come out equal as uh, let me do it. It's equal to this multiplied by this minus this multiplied by along i cap. This comes out equal thirty seven point three. This is thirty seven point three i cap. Then you have to you know delete this row. Delete this column. This comes out equal to minus approximately ninety nine point nine J cap, and the last one that is you delete this row, delete this column, this multiplied by this, this comes out equal to plus one seventy three long K cap. Okay, so this is the moment, but you should be very careful about the new units. As far as the unit of force is concerned, unit of force is Newton. And this R O B you are measuring in terms of meter, okay? Therefore, the unit of this uh, moment will be newton meter, okay? So this is the moment. This is the moment of this force F. How much is the moment of the moment of this force F about point O is equal to this much, okay? So this is how you have to 